When bullets fly and buildings burn, split-second decisions can mean life or death. The Battle of Benghazi tested the courage of six brave Americans, including one who says his faith helped him survive. Today on Jewish Voice with Jonathan Burnus. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice, where we help you to discover the Jewish roots of your Christian faith. I'm Jonathan Burnus. On the night of September 11, 2012, terrorists attacked the State Department, killing our ambassador, Chris Stevens. Six American security operators fought to repel the attackers. Five of these brave men lived to tell about it. Our guest today is one of those American heroes. He's here to share his incredible story of courage and set the record straight about what really happened during those fateful 13 hours. Please welcome Chris Tonto Peranto. Hey. Chris, welcome, man. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me, bro. Welcome to Jewish Voice. Uh, thank you I, for I just want to say Thanks it's you. an honor to have you oh, on the program. I appreciate that. I've been looking forward to it. And you are truly an American hero. Oh, you're, in, you. you're really an inspiration to it's, us all. So it, it's you agree with that, that everybody? <laughs> I want to jump right in with the question that I've been wanting to ask you, Chris. You had uh, an incredible career in security. Mm -hmm. uh, you gave it all up. You walked away from it. You yes. are really in the lion's den, so to speak. You've laid it all on the line and are telling your story really to anyone who will listen, why? You know, it's, well, it wasn't a decision that I made uh, uh, right off the bat. I, I continued to deploy, actually. I went to Yemen after Benghazi. I took 90 days off, and, uh, and it was hard to remain in the U.S. because I saw the misrepresentation. I saw a lot of the lies that were being strewn about Benghazi and what took place that night, and um, really felt that my best place was to be back overseas with my team, with my buddies, with guys that I could trust. Um, yeah, in fact, I heard you speak yeah. recently in Phoenix, and you said, I, I couldn't trust anyone. You couldn't. I couldn't trust anyone in America. Politicians. Nobody. The, anyone. Well, and it's, it's because, of, you know, today's society is such a media-driven pop culture society that every time I turn the TV on, I'd see something else that was wrong or incorrect or fabricated uh, based off of whether it was somebody to help somebody win an election, whether it was to politicize and help an agenda, and nobody knew that we existed. And because of our non-disclosures, we're not able to go out in there and talk about it. And, and that's not what we do anyway. So my best place to where I felt safe and also just felt comfortable was back with my guys. And that was, I, I was going back overseas and being, and I was so used to being overseas, being in these countries, because I did it for 10 years, that it was almost like going back home again. And uh, after eight months and, and seeing the stories completely misconstrued, and, and, uh, and like I said, I know we haven't used the term lie a lot in, with the movie and the book, when you're doing the promotion, I'll use it now. There were a lot of lies being thrown out of DC about what took place in Benghazi. And um, we had a final straw for me was we signed multiple non-disclosures. We signed a non-disclosure during the memorial ceremony at Langley for, uh, for Glenn, who passed away that night, Bub, and Ty, Tyrone Woods, Roan. And that was, that was very unclassy, to say the least. It was very hurtful. And I remember the team after, the entire team, we went out, had a few drinks together, and Jack Silva, uh, Navy SEAL, John Krasinski plays in the movie, for those who have seen it, he says, man, wasn't that just bleeped up? And I said, you know what, that was. And we, we decided right there, we're gonna tell the story. We voted on it. If any of the team said no, we were not gonna do it. And we voted and everyone was unanimous and we resigned. You just reached a point where you, I remember the movie Network where they, yeah started yelling out the window, we're fed up with this, we're not gonna take it anymore. Straw broke and, the and camel's back. You were just fed up with it. Just done with it. And, and it was a hard decision to make because we knew we were gonna have to sacrifice our jobs. Now, did, did you feel betrayed right after yes. the, 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 this, this uh, whole outbreak, the 13 hours? Did you, did you feel like there were warning signs that were ignored? Um, I, you know, definitely there were warning signs. Uh, you know, the, there was a failure by the State Department from the beginning to that night to the end. Scott Wicklin, Alec Henderson, and Dave Uden, heroes in their own right, the State Department security officers, and Ambassador Chris Stevens, and the RSO, uh, Eric Nordstrom, and Greg Hicks, a deputy, a deputy uh, 
deputy ambassador there in Benghazi and in, there in Tripoli, I'm sorry, in Libya. They had all been putting requests in for more security and their leadership up in Washington, which consisted of Hillary Clinton, Patrick Kennedy and Charlene Lamb, kept turning them down. Why were all these requests ignored? The reason we didn't get more security, the State Department didn't get more security there, um, I believe was because they wanted the host country to handle it and we wanted them to feel that we weren't uh, being over overzealous with our security. So we didn't put a lot of people on the ground there because it would have offended the Libyan government. It's I, my I'm going to ask you a question that I don't know if anybody has asked you before. Do you think this is part of the agenda to, to diminish the power of America? And, and to be to create a level playing field, so to speak. Uh, and that's I do. And I, I said that during a speaking event. Anybody actually asked you Lubbock, that before? Actually, in Lubbock, I, I spoke okay. at a big Lubbock, and it wasn't that exact question, but it was more or less, what, what does it look like? How's the states? What does the United States look like now to the world? And I said, you know what? We are not making people rise to what we were at once was, which was a powerful country. We're bringing ourselves down to their levels. Yeah, and that but it's so by weird. design. That's yeah. the thing. It's by design, and, and, I, I, and people just don't talk about it. It's I, by design. I do agree. I it's do agree change. with that. I do agree with that, a hundred percent. I do, wouldn't agree with you that five years ago, but as I've been th and I've, I've been in the middle of all that stuff, I've, I've seen it firsthand. I do agree with that now. Today, I do. I want to get into the specific events uh, in just a minute, but the cover-up that followed, which yeah. brought you to the place with you, with your with your t uh, teammates. Yes of saying this we're not going to allow this to go we're going to speak the truth we're going to we're going to just going to be courageous yes, and sir. speak the truth yes, sir. and it's a different kind of it's a shift of courage to to deal with 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 truth mm -hmm. at home here uh why the cover-up this strange thing about this offensive uh, video and you know I, 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 there, there's there's some overt things i think and one was the election was going on i think that was fairly obvious i think if uh, I do think that Mitt Romney would have grabbed onto that and utilized it during his campaign. He probably would have won the presidency. So I, I do think that was why terrorists was on the run. Osama bin Laden been, had been killed. Al Qaeda was not a threat anymore. Terrorism was not a threat anymore. Obviously, it was. And then it, Libya became a failed state, and allows that's where hey that's where ISIS is. That's where their training ground is. Derna is where where the bad guys originated from before they get heading over to Syria. Um, you know, I, there there may have been other other operations, and because they're of covert in nature, I wish I could talk about them. I, you know what I, people I, see through this, and, 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 and that's do. why they're we smart. have a, a country that's really angry. Yeah. There's a lot of angry people out there that says enough is enough. We're going to level Washington and start again. Yeah. Right. So I, I don't I don't know. I think we have to we, we, we have to aim that anger, and we have to we have to harness that anger. Yeah and do productive things to yeah, rebuild I, America. I, I, I see, and you, you see good things, and, and we're getting off a little bit, but you see good things with some of the candidates, and you see some bad things. And that was one of us, we do need to harness that to make it a more positive, uh, positive direction to, to change things, not just yell and scream and, and call each other names. That, 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 Absolutely. That, you can't do that. We positive. could go off in that direction, yeah, we, but I want to focus on yeah. what happened in Benghazi. The, the, the angry mob. Who, <laughs> Who perpetrated this? Was it was it was it just a sporadic thing, no, or was this no, orchestrated? No, no. no, this was orchestrated. It was planned out. Um, for those that see me speak, I go into right before the attack, 9 p.m. that night. Uh, Ty and and uh, John Tig Tigan were coming back from doing a reconnaissance, and they were stopping by to check on the State Department guys. They drove right in front of the consulate, called Dave Ubin on the radio, and, and I remember hearing Ty saying, "Dave, we're going to come check on you." And Dave said. We're good. Ambassador's in his bed. Everything's quiet. This is 9 p.m., 9-11, 2012. No protests, no mass gatherings. Myself and Boone had been watching because we're on cure of quick reaction force. We're basically sitting in a room monitoring radio traffic, watching TV, and we saw nothing about a video. Any sense okay. in the atmosphere, though, that, that you've been at this a long time, that something was brewing? Well, not that night. I mean, the, the, the concert had been attacked twice before. We had actually been uh, not allowed to respond to an IED attack on the concert grounds 45 days prior. Two months prior, the British ambassador had been attacked in front of the consulate as well. So there had been attacks, hence the State Department saying, the, the security officers are Scott and Alec and Dave, the ambassador, saying, we need more security. This is getting to be a dangerous place. But that night in particular, no, it was actually very, very quiet. In hindsight, this would have been so easy to prevent. Oh, yeah. But I wouldn't be here talking to you if they would have got even just a machine gun. Yeah. Hey, we have to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk more about the details of what happened in those critical 13 hours and how Chris's faith got him through. He boldly proclaims yeah. uh, his faith in 
the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel, and the Savior of the world, Jesus the Messiah. And then later, we're going to tackle some of your questions about the Bible, Israel, and other interesting topics in a segment we call Ask the Rabbi. Don't go away. One down, man. Great. 13 Hours is the amazing story of what really happened during the Battle of Benghazi. Written by a New York Times best-selling author, this book features the only first-hand accounts of the brave men who went beyond the call of duty to fiercely protect an American diplomatic compound and CIA station. The book also details how one hero's unwavering faith in God helped make the difference between life and death. It will give you courage to press on to victory. We want to sow 13 hours into your life for a gift of $60 or more. The hardcover edition you receive will be personally autographed by Chris Peronto, today's guest, and one of the men who fought so bravely in the Battle of Benghazi. He is a sold-out Christian who loves God. These are Jewish people in critical need. Your support helps us provide them and their neighbors with life-saving water purifiers. We've begun the work, but with your help, we will do so much more. Your gift today of $60 or more literally saves precious lives and souls for God's kingdom. Remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. This is your opportunity to receive that blessing. The need is urgent. People are dying and need to hear the good news of God's love found in Jesus the Messiah. Please call or click now to help us save and transform lives. I'm back with Chris uh, Tonto Peranto, an American hero. And uh, this is a fantastic book that we're giving as a gift to people who Thank you. support That's us wow. in our, our work to the uh, communities, the needy communities in places like Ethiopia and Zimbabwe. 13 hours the inside account of what really happened. I know many saw the movie yes. and uh, many, many books, but this is a special hardbound edition. You're going to be signing yes. these for people. Uh, and, and again, it's our way of saying thank you. This is a really accurate account of what happened. There's some things changed, but I read in that this yeah. is this is not fiction. This no. is this is a real account. The, the team, the entire team, including Jack Silva and D.B. Benton Boone, using their pseudos, because of family reasons, this is their families didn't want their names out there. All of us wrote the book together with Mitchell Zukoff. Now, Marines, Rangers, and SEALs trying to write a book, we would have had a pop-up book. You, know, you would have had a coloring book going on. So we had to get a professional, and we were blessed to have Mitchell Zukoff, who had won awards from, with integrity when he was with the Boston Globe. He was a, he's still a professor out in Boston, and he's just a genuinely good he's, person. He's an incredible writer, too. You he heard he had pedigree before us. And I, I'm a, the, the two books he did on World yes, War II were absolutely awesome. phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. So, a great I, author. And you know you know, God's kind of taking a hand this when he just gives you Mitchell's essay. And then Mitchell, Mitchell put us to work. I swear I was back in college again. And, and we did three different revisions to make sure it got right. And you were very hands-on in the movie as yes, well. Yes, we were. And uh, uh, I, I have the ultimate respect for Michael Bay, not only because of his work ethic, boy, that guy works hard, but because he wanted us to be involved. Not only to add validity to the movie, but he, he, he has that much respect for veterans. He does. He, and he's, he's a very genuinely, and in Hollywood, that says a lot. For it me does. to say, it's hey. It's an awesome he, movie. How yeah. many saw the movie in the audience? And many of you watching at home also saw the movie. What courage. There's, there, it, this is so inspiring because the courage that the six of you display, mm -hmm. it, just no regard for your life. We're going to save people. We're going to do whatever it takes to get every man out. Well, that's, that's, that's what God would want us to do. That's why, I, that's why I have John 15, 13 on my shirt. You know, you sacrifice. Love is no greater than this that a man laid down his life for his friend. And that's when guys go overseas and fight as contractors of the military. That's what they're doing. They're putting others before themselves. And that's honestly, that's how we should live in this country. And, and we're not seeing that. That's how the politicians need to be. And we don't see yes. that in, the poli in politics. That's where it can applause. Yeah. You, you, you obviously take your faith very seriously, Chris. Yes, uh, be, 
you, you, it's on your website, John 15, 13. What a verse. And, and, and you take it seriously. Yes, yes, I do. Um, literally. I literally. I, and I was, now I, I'm a sinner like everybody else. Uh, I, I'm, I'm fallible. I, the only one that isn't infallible is, is the man upstairs is God. So, uh, uh, you know, but I have faith that he takes care of me. I have faith that, that uh, if I do sin and I ask for forgiveness, that I'm forgiven. Um, I was raised that way. My parents are very strong in, in their faith. And, and we were raised Catholic first. And to me, Christianity is Christianity. Now, I think in that's... In the end, it's about a relationship with, with God. God. Is exactly. that what it comes down to? You, yes. you talk about just walking through this devastation. I've seen the pictures in the book. I've yeah. seen pictures on television. You walked into this firefight and... It's beautiful. <laughs> I wish... But I, the reason why it's beautiful is because... Of, I accepted that that's where I was supposed to be. God said that that's where I needed to be that night. And when you accept that that's where you're supposed to be, you're not worried about dying because you know if you die, He's got you. Yeah. You're, 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 you, and you can open up, and everything is so vivid. And it, it was yeah, it's you're beautiful. You're talking about bullets that are clipping by you, and the beauty of the snap. They're snapping. It's snapping. The beauty of the snap. And you know, Michael Bay did such a great job because I asked him. I remember talking to him. I said, "You need to get these colors popping." You need to get that grass green and that orange because that's what it looked like to us. There's no fog of war in combat. There's no such things. That's just what politicians usually say because they've never been in combat. They don't know any better. They see it on cameras, on TVs, on feeds. When you're actually in the mix, everything is extremely vivid. So you have six sense. Do, do you have this incre just incredible clarity? <laughs> yeah, you do. You, 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 you really do. I, I'm, I, obviously, I'm going back there right now. I'm just thinking about it right now. You, it, it's You're a, smiling. It's it is. A, it, it's you know. There, there's a saying that we had that, that Rangers and Marines are only you know they're only worth their weight when they're getting shot or hand grenades are getting thrown at them. There's there's a lot of truth at that. I mean, they, because every when that's happening, our world opens up and we become we just become fun, happy, happy go lucky guys that are just happy to be here and happy to be fighting. You you, you actually talk about in the and I want you to describe this for us. When you went into the compound, mm -hmm. and there's just the, this bullet snapping by you, and you just knew you were going to make it. You actually felt, was it? You felt a, 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 there's a, a divine a, protection it's around a, it's you. It's a cocoon. I actually there was the specific example that took place, and that was we were getting counterattacked after being on that concert for about an hour, um, 11:30, and uh, we were getting counterattacked from rocket propelled grenades and small arms fire, and. I got caught out in the open. I was very much, the movie, I wish I had as much cover as what Michael had me in the movie. I didn't have that much cover. Um, uh, so I was out in the open in the middle of a road and some rounds are going by and God's got me. I, cocoon, it's, it's warm, you do, you feel warm. There's a cocoon of a protection around you. It's like you feel golden, honestly, you do. And, and people have asked me, well, have you felt that when a crisis situation or have you been in a crisis situation where you haven't felt that? Yeah, I have, and it's kind of scary then but too. But this is so applicable. That yeah. Very few people uh, end up on the battlefield like you with bullets flying around you, uh, facing the enemy, but we all face the enemy. We all yeah. go through trials and tribulations, and there is a divine courage that comes with the certainty that God's got my, got, got my, got your back. Got my he's back. got he's, your back. I'm in his care. And, and, and that's, that's where you just, you, like I tell people when I do speak, and I bring God into it a lot when I speak, relinquish that control. Let go and let God, let go and let God is really what it is. Yeah. And that's what you did there. And because there, you can't control the situations in combat. When you try to control the situation, that's when you fail. And that's when you, your chances of dying increase. And that's an extreme example. But if people can pull that extreme example in their daily lives, their lives are going to be so much better, so much happier, and just you're going to see so much in this world. It's just clear. Well, we appreciate you so much. It's so inspirational. That taking John 15, 13, literally, mm -hmm. no greater love that has any man than this than to lay down his life for his friends. That, that's what Jesus did for you, yeah. for Chris, for me. And uh, we need to be, have that same heart of servanthood to lay down our life for a world that's dying. Chris, thanks so much. Thank you, Look sir. forward to having you back oh, tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, the book, it, it, and this is a unique gift that we're making available to you as you help us to bring the gospel around the world. A hardbound, limited edition, signed copy of 13 Hours. We want to bless you with this amazing book to say thank you for your support of Jewish Voice as we proclaim the gospel around the world to the Jew first. Up next, I answer some of your questions and ask the rabbi, don't go away.
13 Hours is the amazing story of what really happened during the Battle of Benghazi. Written by a New York Times best-selling author, this book features the only first-hand accounts of the brave men who went beyond the call of duty to fiercely protect an American diplomatic compound and CIA station. The book also details how one hero's unwavering faith in God helped make the difference between life and death. It will give you courage to press on to victory. We want to sow 13 hours into your life for a gift of $60 or more. The hardcover edition you receive will be personally autographed by Chris Peronto, today's guest, and one of the men who fought so bravely in the Battle of Benghazi. He is a sold-out Christian who loves God. These are Jewish people in critical need. Your support helps us provide them and their neighbors with life-saving water purifiers. We've begun the work, but with your help, we will do so much more. Your gift today of $60 or more literally saves precious lives and souls for God's kingdom. Remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. This is your opportunity to receive that blessing. The need is urgent. People are dying and need to hear the good news of God's love found in Jesus the Messiah. Please call or click now to help us save and transform lives. We get many questions from our viewers every week on various topics related to faith, Israel, Jewish customs, the last days. Let's take a few minutes to answer some of them right now. Our first question is from Nancy in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, what does it mean in Romans 11:26 when Paul writes, and so all Israel shall be saved. Does this mean all Jews? Well, uh, Nancy, thank you for writing. I'm glad you asked because this is one of my favorite verses in Scripture. The verse that comes before it in uh, verse 25 says that there's a blindness that's happened uh, to the Jewish people in part until, so there's a set time, until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. I don't think that's talking about full number. I think that's talking about the fullness of time and a fullness coming back to God's people, the, the church. Uh, and part of that fullness is a restoration of the Jewish roots of their faith so that Jewish people actually see that Christianity is Jewish, or rather following Jesus, following Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah, is the most Jewish thing that anyone can do. So the, the, that blindness in part means that there's always a remnant of Jews that believe in Jesus, Messianic Jews. And Nancy, we've seen that remnant get larger and larger and larger over the last almost 50 years since the restoration of Jerusalem, which fulfilled a prophecy of Jesus himself that Jerusalem would be trodden down by the Gentiles, that word again, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled, culminating in the national salvation of the Jewish people worldwide and a return to Israel. I don't know if all means every last one, but it's a growing remnant that gets larger and larger and larger, crying out, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai, and ushering in the return of Jesus, not to Rome, not to New York, but to Jerusalem physically, where he departed from. And he is coming back, and I believe he's coming back soon. Do you agree, everyone? Yeah. yeah. The next question comes from Yolanda in Jacksonville, Florida. She asks, if we're no longer under the law, why do you teach we should follow Old Testament customs and practices? Yolanda, that's a really good question. And I think we have to ask, what does it mean to be under the law? Jewish believers such as myself don't believe that we're under the law in terms of the law bringing us salvation, bringing us right standing with God. Uh, only faith in the Messiah and his and God's provision uh, can can bring us into right relationship with God. And I think that's a, a very widespread understanding across uh, the the Messianic Jewish community of Jews who believe in Jesus. So it's not anything we do for salvation. The fact is that all of the customs and traditions, the modim, the appointed times of the Lord in the Old Testament were all types and shadows of that which would come and be revealed in the Brit Hadashah, the New Covenant, 
And Jesus, Yeshua, is at the center of all of those feasts and traditions. And so we recognize him at the center and we celebrate these these customs, these feasts of the Lord and celebrations, understanding that at the very center is Jesus the Messiah and his salvation. Great question. I'm glad you asked it. And then finally, the last one. Many of us, uh, many have written with this question, like Justin in Irvine, California. What are some of the signs that Jesus is coming back soon? Love that question as well. Uh, the restoration of the Jewish people back to their land. Uh, Israel being restored in 1948, uh, Justin. Jerusalem being restored in 1967 are direct fulfillments of last day's Bible prophecy that had to be fulfilled before Jesus could return. That's happened. The Jewish people are going back to the land. Jewish people are crying out as, as Jesus said they had to before he returned. Blessed is you comes in the name of the Lord. We're seeing wars and rumors of wars. We're seeing the stage set for, I believe, financial collapse and, and, and very dark times. The good news is the church is going to get brighter and brighter and brighter, and we are going to be used in the most profound ways uh, by God in the history of mankind to bring salvation to the ends of the earth. There's so many different things I could talk about, but then the last one I want to mention is the gospel going to every nation. Jesus himself said, the gospel go to every nation before the end will come. And that's happening now as the gospel goes to every nation. And there's only 1,700 languages left to translate the Bible into. So we're getting there. And I believe we're near the return of Jesus. So get ready and fulfill your destiny. You can ask your questions by going to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Jewish Voice, or go to our website, it's simply this, jvmi.tv. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Before I leave you, I want to remind you that Psalm 122.6 says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. The Battle of Benghazi featured extraordinary acts of courage and heroism. For 13 hours, six American heroes waged a fierce firefight to hold off enemy attackers against all odds. And now, one of them is giving credit to God for helping him survive. Next time on Jewish Voice with Jonathan Burness. Join Jewish Voice Ministries as we tour the Holy Land and celebrate Israel 2017. It's time to honor the 50-year anniversaries of Jewish Voice and the liberation of Jerusalem. On this trip, you'll stay in five-star accommodations as we tour Mount Carmel, Nazareth, Jerusalem, the Mount of Olives, Upper Room, and more. You'll see Jonathan Burness commemorate the recapture of Jerusalem right where it happened. We'll also visit an Israeli military base and enjoy a Bedouin meal. You can renew your marriage vows on the Sea of Galilee and participate in an immersion ceremony at the Jordan River. As an added bonus, you can even visit Eilat, the Red Sea, and world-famous Petra. Act now before this once-in-a-lifetime event sells out. Call and speak with our events coordinator to learn more exciting details about Celebrate Israel 2017 or visit jvmi.org Israel. 